Okay. Good morning once again. Let's just start as um, some of your classmates may be still coming in. But <clears throat> it's already 9.12. So let's start. Can you guys see my screen now? Yes, sir. Okay, good, good. Okay. So let's start with... Uh, pop quiz just type in the chat box your answers or you can just answer it by um, unmuting your mic okay the first question to meet the objective of providing information about financial position financial performance and cash flows of an entity Financial statements should provide information about all of the following except what? your answer guys you can actually answer by turning on your mic huh? To meet the objective of providing information about financial position, financial performance, and cash flows of an entity, financial statements should provide information about all of the following. Exit what? Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, so a lot of you answered D in the chat box. So the correct answer is the nature of business activities. Okay, so the nature of business activity is not found in the balance sheet or income statement or cash flow it can be found though in the where do we find um, the nature of business activities where is it usually contained or where is it usually stated your answer is correct okay so assets liabilities and equities balance sheet income and expenses including gains and losses is actually found in the state in the financial performance Contributions by and distribution to owners in their capacity as owners are found usually in the cash flows. So where do you find the nature of business activities? Any idea? Do you have any idea guys where you can find the nature of business activity? Or do we find, uh, or we can't find it at all?
where can you find the nature of business activities? Anyone who wants to try, where do you find the nature of business activity? Or where can you find that information? If that information is relevant for you, where would you search for that? Okay, thank you, Reno. Yes, it's in the notes too, financial statements. Okay, it's not in the statement of cash flows or in the financial position or financial performance, but it's usually described, the nature of the business usually described in the first note, okay, in the notes to financial statements. Okay, good, good. <clears throat> How about this one? What is the objective of financial statements? Okay, a lot of you answered A. So what is the objective of financial statements? To provide information about the financial position, financial performance, and changes in financial position of an entity that is useful to a wide range of users in making economic decisions. Okay, so it's actually letter A, so you're right. Okay, good. How about this one? Financial statements must be prepared at least what? Annually, quarterly, semi-annually, or every two years? about the others. Okay, so as we have mentioned in the previous meeting, we are going to be required to prepare the financial statements at least annually. Okay, annually. So that's A. Next. It is the presentation and classification of fi financial statement items on a uniform basis from one accounting period to another. What is it? What is it describing? Okay, good, good. So it's um, in order for it, uh, okay, the uniform basis from one accounting period to the next, okay, is actually consistency of presentation. We need it to be consistent so that when we compare from period to period, it's also comparable information, okay? So it should be uniform. There should be consistency. It's good. So when the classification of items in the financial statements is changed, the entity A must recla not reclassify the comparative amounts, B can choose whether to reclassify the comparative amounts, C 
must reclassify the comparative amounts unless it is impracticable to do so, or D must reclassify the current year amounts only. What do you think? When classification of items in the financial statements is changed, the entity should what? What should they do? What should they do? What should they do, guys? If there's any change in the classification of items, what should be done? Okay, Regine has an answer, Justin, Pearl is unsure, okay, 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 so a lot of you answered C, it must reclassify the comparative amounts unless it is impracticable to do so. That is actually, guys, the correct answer, okay, so... You don't, uh, you should reclassify the comparative amounts unless it is impracticable to do so. So A could have been correct, but C is more appropriate because if it's impracticable to do so, you will no longer have to reclassify. Okay. Can choose whether to reclassify the comparative amounts. It's not optional, so B is also incorrect. And D, must reclassify the current year amounts only, is incorrect because that will not make your financial statement comparative. Okay, so answer is C. Must reclassify the comparative amounts unless it is impracticable to do so. Okay, next. The statement of financial position is useful for all of the following except what? Except what? Useful for all of the following DAO except what? Alin dyan ang hindi siya useful. Or at least is not relevant yung financial position. The answer is very obvious, no? So, what's the answer? In Quirino, how about the others? What's your answer, guys? The statement of financial position is useful for all of the following, except what? Except... Except what? How about the others? What's your answer?
Okay. So a lot of you answered C, some answered B. Okay. A lot of you really answered C. Okay, if you answered B, so the correct answer is Okay, financial position is useful for all of the following. So useful shop for all of these except one. One to analyze cash inflows and outflows for the period. Okay. Why is it not useful in analyzing cash inflows and outflows for the period? Because you can find this information in the financial position. Okay. But A, compute the rate of return, uses uh, the, the balance sheet information, C, to evaluate capital structure. Capital structure is actually in the equity portion. And uh, to assess future cash flows, uh, you will be able to see the assets that could be easily converted into cash in the future or that will be converted into cash in the future. Also, um, looking at the ratios, so D is also true. So the best answer is letter B, okay? The correct answer is letter B. Okay, next. Which is a limitation of the statement of financial position? What's the limitation in the statement of financial position? A, many items that are of financial value are omitted. B, judgment and estimate are used. C, current fair value is not reported. D, all of these are limitations to the statement of financial position. Which is a limitation of statement of financial position? A, many items are of financial value are omitted. Judgment and estimate are used. Current fair value is not reported. All of these are limitation of financial position. What do you think, guys? Okay, so answers are coming in. Okay, some answered B, some answered D. <coughs> okay, some answered D, some answered B. Ano kaya? Limitation of financial statement or financial position is so it's either B or D according to you. So the final and correct answer is the correct answer is letter D actually. All of these are limitation of the statement of financial position. So many items that are of financial value are omitted. Judgment and estimate are used. Current fair value is not reported. Okay, so all of these are limitations. Okay, current and non-current presentation of assets and li liabilities provides useful information when the entity A. supplies goods or services within a clearly identifiable operating cycle or B. is a financial institution 
or C is a public utility, or D is a non-profit organization. The current and non-current presentation of assets and liabilities provides useful information when the entity is what? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Answer B, B, A. Okay, so thank you, Justin, Honey, Diana, Christine, Reno, Claire, Catherine. So, current and non-current presentation of assets and liabilities provides useful information when the entity is, is a, uh, supply, is a supplier of goods and services within a clearly identifiable operating cycle. So, it's A, okay? Um, sir, how about B, C, and D? Well, regardless of the type of, of the organization, whether it's an NPO, whether it's a public utility or a financial institution, you'd still be using these information, assets and liabilities, to really know, um, okay? Actually, assets and liabilities will be very important, or this information will be important for you, especially the current assets um, if you're looking at the current ratio whether or not the company is able to meet its current obligation so that's very useful for you and that's usually useful for you if you're a supplier of goods or services within a clearly identifiable operating cycle okay because you you will be able to find there if if the company will be able to meet the the obligation in the in the future okay so that's letter a next assets to be sold consumed or realized as part of the normal operating cycle are a current assets b non current assets c classified as current or non current in accordance with other criteria or d non current investments Okay, so um, you guys have um, entered your answers, said um, current assets. So assets to be sold, consumed, or realized as part of the normal operating cycle are, of course, current assets. Correct. If it's beyond the operating cycle, um, then it's a non-current asset. Okay, so it's A. Next. Which statement about the statement of financial position is not, is not true? A. Biological assets should be reported in the statement of financial position. B. The number of shares authorized per issue should be reported in the statement of financial position or the statement of changes in equity or in the notes. C. Provisions should be recognized in the statement of financial position. Or D. A. Revaluation surplus and non current asset in the current year should be recognized in the income statement.
Okay, what do you think guys is the it's not true what statement? about the others what's your answer it's not true what statement is not true Okay, a lot of you answered A. Okay, so why A? Biological assets should be reported in the statement of financial position. It is reported in the financial position, guys, but we're looking for the not true here, what is false actually. So if you're going to look at statement A, it's correct, it's true. If we're going to look at letter B, the number of shares authorized for issue should be reported in the statement of financial position. Okay, the statement of changes in equity or in the notes. So, yes, that's also correct. Uh, provisions should be recognized in the statement of financial position, of course, if it's provision. So D, revaluation surplus. What makes this incorrect? Letter D is actually the answer. What makes this incorrect? What do you think? So I'm giving you the answer. It's letter D, but what makes it incorrect? What do you think? Because of what? Okay, so Erwin, why is it incorrect to just say income statement? What should be there? What should be... Where should the revaluation surplus be? Where should it be? You're actually correct, Erwin. So, when you say um, what is not true here is the revaluation surplus. Uh, revaluation surplus is... On a non-current asset in the current year should be recognized not in the income statement but in the statement of, of comprehensive income no other comprehensive income so not income statement okay next Okay, so month company reported net assets totaling 8750000 at year end, which included the following treasury shares of month company at cost, 
idle machinery, trademark, allowance for inventory, read, write down of 200,000. What amount should be reported as net assets at year end? What amount? Just type in your answers in the chat box, guys. What do you think is the amount to be reflected as net assets at year end, guys? What do you think? Are you there? Okay. I only see one try or one answer about the others. Okay, how about the others? Okay. Okay, thank you Pearl, Roshanna, Catherine, John, Justin, about the others, what do you think? How much would be the adjusted, the net assets here at year end? Okay, so, okay, thank you Regine, Reno. So, the, actually your classmate actually got it right. Um, Catherine has uh, information on how to compute it there. So use the 8,750,000 okay, reported net assets of 8,750,000 but just deduct the 250 treasury shares. Idle machinery and trademark and allows for inventory write down are not part in the computation of the net assets. They are already supposed to be reflected in the assets portion so what affects the net assets is actually the treasury shares so 8.5 million is the correct answer or 8 million five hundred thousand good good okay next we have puzzle company provided the following information at your end okay so you have the cash and cash equivalence accounts receivable inventory Property plan and equipment with carrying amount, accounts payable, wages payable, share capital, share premium. Uh, the only assets not listed is short term investment. The only liabilities not listed are a 3 million note payable due in two years and a related accrued interest of 100,000 
due in four months. The current ratio at year end is 1.5 to 1. Okay, so what is the amount of current liabilities? What is the amount of short-term investment? And what is the balance of retained earnings at year end? Mm -hmm. Mapapalaban ka, no? Medyo madami yan. So I'll give you a few minutes to um, compute. Um, hopefully, by now, you are already you already know that you should have your ball pen and notebook with you and um, your calculator with you so you can um, correctly answer and within the within the time frame that we will be allotting so I'll just give you two minutes to solve all those three kasi nga refresher lang naman to do that so Let's see So when you answer, so we know what you're answering, um, you just type the letter and then the, the amount, okay? Okay, that's... Um Just type in your answers, guys. Thank you, Justine and Roshana. How about the others? How about the other items? You have only answered so far A. How about B? What is the amount of short-term investment? What is the balance of the earnings at year end?
How about the others? Okay, Erwin, thank you. You guys can also start um, answering B as well. What is the amount of short-term investment? This is the second to the last problem though. Then we can proceed to the discussion. Thank you, Reno. Okay. Thank you, Justin. How about the others? I only see some few people answering, like three, four of them. But we have like 10 of you guys here, so. Okay, Pearl. Thank you, Pearl. Um, all right, so let's be about C. Let me try on letter C. What is the balance of retained earnings? Okay, I can't see any try on letter C first. Um, <clears throat> but um, to solve letter A, I think um, your classmate has hit here. Okay, so it's answer for letter A. Um, you can take note, um, is 6 million. How do you get 6 million? You just add um, accounts payable, 4.4, pages payable of 1.5 million and then accrued interest payable of 100,000. So the total current liabilities according to uh, in this problem is 6 million. And then since you have your current liabilities, the question of what is the amount of short-term investment, um, you will then see here the importance of you being given the current ratio at your end. So if the current liabilities is um, 6 million, then using that ratio of 1.5 so multiply the 6 million to 1.5 that should give you the total current assets of 9 million but since you know that from the 9 million accounts receivable as given is 2 million and inventory is 6 million so that and cash and cash equivalent is also 500,000 so the total uh, non-investment, no? you're just deriving this or squeezing in the information based on the information. So from the total current assets of 9 million, deduct the cash and cash equivalents of 500,000, the accounts receivable of 2 million and inventory of 2 million, you should have your short-term investment amount of 500,000. Okay? And then for letter C, Okay, some of your classmates already got it. Okay, so for letter C, you will have the current assets, okay, which is um, 9 million 
plus the non-current assets or property, plant, and equipment, which is already given there, 12 million. Your total assets is 21 million. Since you have a current liability of 6 million there, okay, um, and then you also have not payable, non-current, okay, not listed in the in the given the only liabilities not listed is three million note so you also have that deduct that and then you have share capital of six million and share premium of four million so if you're going to add all those information the difference is um, of the total versus the total asset is two million so your retained earnings is actually two million Okay, again, your total assets is based on the current assets computation using the factor of 1.5. Your current assets is 9 million plus the 12 million that is property, plant, and equipment. Your total assets is 21 million. Then you also have to, to add all your liabilities and equity. So adding all your liabilities, 6 million for current liabilities, note payable of 3 million share capital of 6 million and 4 million for share premium okay that's 19 million so 19 million of current liabilities and other liabilities and equity there's a missing 2 million that must be your retained earnings okay so that's how you're going to compute for that one so yep a is 6 million, B is 500,000, and C is 2 million. Okay, next. Kenya Company provided the following information on December 31, 2020. The questions are, what amount should be reported as total current assets on December 31, 2020? And what amount should be reported as total current liabilities on December 31, 2020? Okay, I'll give you a minute to answer that. Should be pretty easy. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so what amount should be reported as total current assets on December 31, 2020? Or 2020, we have mm, I can't see any and any tries yet. So are you there, guys?
ओके मस्ट बी योर इंटरनेट प्रो हाउ अबाउट द अदर्स Okay, so thank you, Roshana. What the others? Okay, so for letter A, what amount should be reported as total current assets? We have um, cash in bank. 5 million okay but it says their cash in bank is net of 500,000 again um, we know that it is provided under the standards that 500,000 I mean the overdraft or liabilities should not be offset with um, asset so it should be added back so 5 million plus 500,000 okay and then you have your petty cash uh, um, unreplenished petty cash expenses of 10,000 so it says 50,000 there but you should deduct the 10,000 because at the end of the period it's not part of cash because it's it's already like vouchers petty cash vouchers unreplenished so deduct that from the petty cash so your petty cash should be 40,000 only the notes receivable is just 4 million it's the same and then accounts receivable net of accounts with credit balances of 1.5 million the 1.5 million should be added back because again it cannot be offset it should be uh, classified as a liability the credit balance okay so add that back so you have accounts receivable of 7.5 million inventory then uh, of 3 million and bond sinking fund of 3 million so debit balances in accounts payable should also be considered in computing the current assets which is around 1 million so you have uh, accounts receivable of a total of the accounts payable debit balance should be accounts receivable as well okay so total accounts receivable would be 8.5 million bank sinking fund is 3 million inventory of 3 million notes receivable of 4 million petty cash of 40,000 and cash in bank of 5.5 million the total for the total current assets is 24 million 40 24 million 40 and for letter B uh, what amount should be reported as total current liabilities you will report the 500,000 overdraft you will also report as liability and um, credit balances of 1.5 million in the accounts receivable and then you will add back the 1 million that you have offset in the accounts payable so your accounts payable should be 8 million your notes payable should be um, 4 million and your accrued expenses of 2 million. So the total current liabilities is 19 million. Okay, the debit balance in suppliers' accounts are not netted against accounts payable but should be classified as current asset under the receivable. Okay, so that's it for our pop quiz.
let's do the next item okay so let's go to some discussions in financial position so financial position is a statement of um it's a formal statement showing the three elements comprising financial position. Of course, you've already mentioned this earlier, it's assets, liabilities, and equity. So investors, creditors, and other statement, user, uh, statement users analyze the statement of financial position to evaluate such factors as liquidity, solvency, and the need of the entity for additional financing. So, here, um, let's just go over some definitions. Um, definition of asset should be a resource controlled by the entity as a result of past events and from which future economic benefits are expected to flow to the entity. So it should be controlled by the entity. It not, it's not necessarily owned, but it should be controlled by the entity at its disposal okay, as a result of past event and from which future economic benefits are expected to flow into the entity so it can be used by the entity okay so what are the essential characteristics that asset is controlled the asset is a result of past event the asset provides future economic benefits and the cost of the asset can be measured reliably so these are the essential characteristics of the assets okay so how about current assets so current assets according to the Philippine Accounting Standards, paragraph 66, where it provides that an entity shall classify an asset as current when, these are the qualifications, the asset is a cash or cash equivalent unless the asset is restricted from being exchanged or used to settle a liability for at least 12 months after the reporting period. The entity holds the asset primarily for the purpose of trading and the entity expects to realize the asset within 12 months after the reporting period and the entity expects to realize the assets or intends to sell or consume it within the entity's normal operating cycle. Okay? So, you remember all these um, qualifications so that you will be able to use this when you are identifying the assets or the line items of the financial statements. <clears throat> okay. So the presentation of current assets are uh, current assets are usually listed in the statement of financial position in the order of in the order of liquidity. So the line items under current assets are cash and cash equivalents. Okay, financial assets are fair as fair values such as trading securities and other investments in quoted equity instruments, trade and other receivables, inventories and prepaid expenses. Okay, so trade and other receivables, inventories, and prepaid expenses. So these are the line items under current assets. Okay, so what are the non currents as well? So non current assets. The caption on current asset is a residual definition. Okay, so whatever is left after identifying what qualifies under the Philippine <coughs> Counting Standards 1 or PAS 1, paragraph 66, shall be under non current assets. Okay. So, liability, it's defined as the present obligation of an entity arising from past event, the settlement of which is expected to result in an outflow from the entity of resources embodying economic benefits. Okay. So um, let's look at the let's look at the essential characteristics of a liability then. Based on this definition, the characteristics of a liability is that it is uh, liability is the present obligation of a particular entity, that the liability is a uh, arises from past event and the settlement of the liability requires an outflow of resources embodying economic benefits. And then let's go to the current liabilities okay, um, discussion. So the current liabilities under uh, past one paragraph 69 provides that an entity shall classify as a liability as current when the entity expects to settle the liability within the 
entity's normal operating cycle and the entity holds the liability primarily for the purpose of trading. The liability is due to be settled within 12 months after the reporting period and the entity does not have an unconditional right to defer settlement of the liability for at least 12 months after the reporting period. How about the presentation of current liabilities? So the presentation of the current liabilities according to Pass 1, Paragraph 54, um, as it is provided, that as a minimum, the face of the statement of financial position shall include the following line items of the current asset, uh, current liabilities. These are the items, trade and other payables, current provisions, short-term borrowing, current portion of long-term debt, and current tax liability. So in practice though, if they are not applicable for the entity, you can just omit those line items because it's going to be zero, just be zero. So, um, But as a minimum, if all of these are existent in your aggregation process, these are the categories or at least these are the line items for the similar items. They can be aggregated into these tabs. Trade and other payables, current provisions, short-term borrowing, current portion of long-term debt, and current tax liability. How about the non-current liabilities? So for the non-current liabilities, as the term suggests, is also a residual definition in past 1, paragraph 69. Okay, so it provides that all liabilities not classified as current liabilities are classified as non-current liabilities. Okay, so examples of non-current liabilities are non-current portion of long-term debt, finance lease liability, deferred tax liability, long-term obligations to entity officers, and long-term deferred revenue. Okay, so let's go to the last part of your financial position, which is the equity. So for the, for the equity, it is a residual interest in the assets of the entity after deducting all the liabilities. So the terms used in reporting the equity of an entity depending on the form of the business. So if it's an owner's it's an owner's equity if it's just sole proprietorship, partner's equity in a partnership, and stockholder's equity or shareholder's equity if it is a corporation. So what are the elements of the shareholder's equity? So the elements of the shareholder's equity are capital stock, subscribed capital stock, common stock, preferred stock, additional paid in capital, retained earnings or deficit, retained earnings appropriated, revaluation surplus, and the treasury stock, okay? So, forms of statement of financial position, we have the report form and the account form. What is the account form? Uh, account form is uh, a form of the balance sheet which is presented in a horizontal format with information in two columns beside each other. On the other side is the assets, the other side would be liabilities and equity. So naturally, the last line in each column lists the total value of the assets and liabilities and equity respectively, and the account form balance. Sh balance sheet can be easier to use when information is being presented for multiple periods, and it allows the reader to verify that the ledger is in balance at a glance. Okay, so you will see that the assets equal the liabilities and equity. Okay? So how about the report form, sir? So report form is, um, is also a type of presentation, but it's a vertical orientation, okay? It's essentially one column that spans the entire width of a page. Starting with assets, the report form balance sheet provides a total value at the end of the assets section, followed by liabilities and equity, with the final line of the report form balance sheet providing the total combined value of liabilities and equity okay so pa straight lang siya up to down okay so that's for financial position and for next meeting prepare for long quiz or some more exercises pop quiz that we can actually um, go over um, that's going to be it for me unless you have any questions. Thank you very much for attending our session for today. See you next meeting, guys. Thank you, sir.
Thank you. Very much. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you.